What's oh, happening? I'm sorry I'm late. It's all, you're like five minutes late. It's all good. How oh, are man. you? Um, it's a bit of a crazy day. We are launching a new product. Okay. And, uh, let me just get my stand down here a little. Yeah, we're launching a new product, and I looked at my clock, and I'm like, oh, my God, my, I must have not heard my calendar reminder. It is all good. I feel like no one's going to forget the name of the product. We have I know. I'm having, a, I'm, I'm having a bad hair day. You know, it's, it's... <laughs> we all are. <laughs> Listen, are you at the level of like quarantine where you have a ring light yet? Is that what you're working with? Or do you guys not have one yet? Let's just say Amanda's ring light is my ring light. Okay. So, uh, it's Amanda's. Yeah, yeah. Amanda's ring light. Well, thank you for making time to talk to me. I know it's of like course. a weird time for everyone. And you guys are probably super busy because you're in the alcohol business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it. I really bit off a lot more than uh, I probably should be chewing. We basically had all sorts of plans to launch this online only product because, yeah. you know, due to the certain ways the the Sparkling Hard Tea that we launched is, is distributed, we have to go state by state. Okay. And every single Instagram I post, everyone's just like, when is Loverboy coming to me? And so we've been working for like six months on a product that can be legally sold online across the country so, so it can't the original lover boy cannot be sold across the because i tried to get it for this live like i wanted to be drinking and i'm like I where know. the hell is the lover boy at man i know so you're it. in chicago and and chicago and dc are like two of the cities we want to hit immediately because they're like they're kind of like little new yorks yeah and uh well i don't know how everyone in the comments <laughs> feel about it we're different it's different I know. Great. I'm, I knew <laughs> I'm that would be a, I'm messing with you. A bold statement. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, but um, yeah. So even though it's it's uh, it's malt free and gluten free, the government still looks at the majority of hard seltzers as a beer because okay. they're like, we don't know what to do with this. It's, it's right. not a spirit. It's not a wine, and that means we have to you know work with the beer distributors, um, and there's literally like a thousand beer distributors in the country. And when people are just blown away at how quickly White Claw went nationwide, it's like, well, yeah, it's the same company as Mike's Hard Lemonade. They right. just plugged it in to their existing, you know, distribution. Right. So we are building not only the product and the brand from scratch, we're building the distribution. And Everything. it just it's, it takes a while. So can anyway. you describe, like, for people who haven't obviously tasted it, like, what, what are the, I know you said it's gluten-free, which I love. Like, what are the ingredients? I know you have flavors. What does it taste like? Because I'm so curious. Yeah, so, I mean, look, I grew up drinking Twisted Tea. Um, when I say grew up, I'm not, I don't mean from, like, the teat. But um, <laughs> out of the womb, you were just, I mean, I can see that, actually. Yeah, I, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Mullet and all. So, you know. As I was like filming a show, I'm just like, all right, there's this cannot be good for me. And then I looked at the nutrition facts as you had to do like a deep Google search, and I was like, oh my god, it's actually horrible. It's like diabetes in a bottle. Yeah. And um, that's when we started drinking some some hard seltzer, which I was like, hey, this is great from a nutrition standpoint. These allowed to be desired in the in the taste department, and the brands are all boring. So yeah, the way I would describe Loverboy is is like it's like a better tasting hard seltzer with a little more flavor but actually less calories and less carbs. So there's 90 calories and zero sugar. Okay. Um, so that. yeah, it's, it's, it's a premium product. You know, everyone's duking it out to be like the Bud Light of Seltzer right now. And I'm like, I, I want to be like Thank the you. higher end product that you graduate to when you don't mind spending two more dollars. Right. So is that what you guys are drinking? Are you, you're quarantining in New York, I'm guessing, right? Is that what you guys have been yeah. drinking? Are you doing wine? Are you like, how are things there? All the above. <laughs> Everything. Are you guys drinking as early as I am? Because I feel like a real a-hole. Like, I'm Amanda, early. <laughs> it all depends on how many merch orders we have to, uh, to fulfill, because we do that. And I, when I say we, it's 99% of the time, Amanda. Like, literally you guys, yeah. So if, it, if there's like 50 boxes to, to pack up, you know, Amanda's like, well, uh, it's, it's two o'clock. That sounds like wine o'clock. <laughs> right. Hell yeah. I mean, I just like, it's airport rules. Like you've seen the mean, I'm sure. Like we're all drinking so much. Is the rest of the cast quarantining in New York? Is anyone in the Hamptons? Do you guys have a, like a group text? A good couple of people. Yeah, we've, we've had a long going 
group chat. It changes its shape and and and, uh, and, and members, but yeah, um, I'm sure <laughs> just depending on the house drama. Right, right. Um, yeah, let's see. Lindsay's here. Hannah's okay. here. Actually, Hannah's out in Long Island with her parents. Carl's okay. out in Hamptons with a buddy. Um, nice. Paige is upstate with her parents. Uh, yeah, I think it's us and Lindsay and I think maybe Jules. Luke's out in, in uh, Minnesota. Oh, my God. His accent. It's crazy. <laughs> in the Midwest. I'm like, I love seeing a Midwest guy on TV. It's so funny. Um, yeah. Hey, they're so the nicest, right? <laughs> I guess to the so. point where they're sneaky. I don't. I have a lot of friends from Minnesota, and they don't talk like that. I thought he was from like another country. Like I was like, "What is going on with that?" But <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. We had like some mutual friends in common. We grabbed a, a drink, you know, before all the filming stuff. And is did uh, you bring him in? Is that how? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, like every <laughs> house, whether it's on or off camera, you need right. some new people. You know, it's Mix it, it always makes it interesting. And it just so happens friendships evolve. So it's it's pretty pretty easy to kind of swap people in and out. Right. Are you um now is Carl still working with you guys? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's that how is it working with him? Like working with It's friends? great. I mean, look, like I'll say this and hopefully no producer gives me a hard time, but like a lot of what people fail to remember is there's stuff that happens because of the show that we can't talk about. And even if we do they right. cut it because like Bravo prides itself on like, you don't see the cameramen, you don't see the mics. Right. Um, you know, they, it, it is real. I'm no actor. Right. And so <laughs> for example, like season one, he immediately got fired. The, 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 the second, the first episode aired, like immediately. Mm, right. Um, and the set, you know, I think he had a couple companies after that, that quite frankly wanted to, to use his, you know, notoriety. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like, it was kind of like a, in one situation, they, they only gave him a, a, a three month contract that happened to be when we were filming. Right. And I was like, oh, I was like, Carl, I wish you didn't sign that deal. Like that sucks. this to yeah. me sounds like they're just hoping to film something for the show or something. So look, Carl's a hard working, he working guy. He's, he's like incredibly driven and motivated. Right. He used to crush it before all this. And so, that's, I guess I want to so remind So it's hurting people. his career, like, you feel like? Or, I mean, it was before the show was? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. It's, Damn. It's, I mean, he was in basically medical sales. Like, right. you make all these dental jokes, but he was selling, you know, dental supplies or medical supplies. People that sell medical supplies make three, dollars $400,000 a year. Yeah. Um, and wow. boom, that was just ripped out from under him the second. I mean, it didn't help that we were driving his company car. <laughs> <laughs> you were. I didn't know that. That's funny. I mean, yeah. I I can see both sides. I mean, I would think that it would help, but I guess if you're in like a serious. I mean, I work in radio, so it's not very serious. So I I mean, but that's crazy. So oh, I you don't know believe it. Like New York City, the vast majority of our friends, like season one and season two, not only wouldn't audition, right, through, through my introduction, but they wouldn't even come to a party because of their career. Wow, like, really? This is this is the world of like finance, PR. Mark, you know, people are just uptight because they work so hard to, to get here. Right. So yes. it's, yeah. It's so tricky. were you like the, were you like the center point that kind of started everything? Like did they, how did they reach out to you? I don't know if you. Yeah. I mean, I just that. threw my hat in the ring as a joke when it was actually not even the hands of the current producers. It was just like, Hey, let's do a reality show at Surf Lodge. And right. uh, jokingly, I, you know, went to the meeting and I was like, wow, they don't have any of the right people here except I knew one girl. Right. Um, and that girl, uh, her name's Sarah Merrill. She actually w was the one that brought in the two twins and mm -hmm. I knew all of them. And okay. so they asked me to come back and bring friends because they had evolved the concept of like, look, here's what Bravo likes existing groups of friends with history. We don't right. want to cast this like the re real world or Jersey shore where it's, People like pit up, you know, to just right. bump heads. We want real friendships. And that's when I started playing a pretty integral role, like introducing people. I mean, right. I've probably introduced a hundred people at this point over the course of four years. Okay. That's very Leo of you. I'm a <laughs> day before you. So I, yeah. I feel you on that one. Um, August 3rd. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the six. Are you the, what are you, the fourth? I'm the fourth. fourth. Oh, I'm the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm a day after you. Yeah. Uh, very yeah. nice. Yeah. My, um, my brother's the third. He always steals my thunder. My sister's the 11th and she's, <laughs> she's younger and stealing my thunder. Um, so do you guys have a wedding day? I know that like we see a preview of it. Yeah. But... Yeah. I mean, another thing that was super challenging, A, how do you look for a venue when you're out in the Hamptons every single weekend? <laughs> Right. Um, additionally, part of our search was made all the more challenging by the concept of like, hey, in a perfect world, uh, we might film this for a TV show. Right. And so when when the season like kicks off, what obviously gets glossed over because again, it has to do the shows. Yeah, our original wedding venue that checked enough boxes, where we're like, hey, let's proceed. Actually would not let us film because of a permit issue that they had. Yeah. So there's a lot more going on behind this. Yeah. Thing. And so like we, you know, at the same time, we actually got cold feet on the, on the venue. Yeah. So it was like an actual miracle. We had some friends go to a, a friend's wedding, uh, someone we didn't know. And they were like, eh, not what we had not were expecting. It. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, thank God. Right. So, uh, that was part of the challenge. Um, Plus, you know, like I said, filming a show, working a job, and then me trying to get Amanda to moonlight at night, you know, with <laughs> Lover Boy is right. not the recipe for wedding planning. <laughs> right. A lot of people were asking, when I asked for questions, how you guys met. <laughs> so wait, someone asked me if I'm wearing mascara. Are uh, you? On my birthday, Are you I into was. that? <laughs> not at the moment. I haven't even showered today. <laughs> I don't think, I hope no one's showering. I mean, for who? <laughs> um eyeliner are you into eyeliner i mean i i guess it's called guy liner and i <laughs> insisted i i wear some on my birthday because i was trying to pull off like that caesar look right but <laughs> i actually think it was just my white reef sandals that just ruined the entire look and the animals were really wild <laughs> too that made me want to have like i feel like if we get out of lockdown i want to have a frat themed birthday party this don't week. we all i love the people like there's always the little haters they're like grow up kyle and i'm like that is the last thing i give a shit about is growing right. up like why do people feel the need to tell me that Listen. i'm like it sounds like you're bitter because your life moved way faster and now you have fomo <laughs> why would you not have a frat birthday party like i can't <laughs> think of one reason the Thank animals, you. I was like, so you. concerned about them, though. I was like, how long were they there? Were there well, that was the other shit. That was the other push. I'm sure you got shit for it. Oh, man. I li I mean, I loved it. I would have been just in the tennis court the whole time. Someone was like tagging PETA. Like, oh, my God. You know, I was like, oh, my God. There was like a caretaker there the entire time looking after them. And they live on a farm in the Hamptons. This is I'm not like Joe Exotic, <laughs> like the goat king here. <laughs> I kind of wish that you were minus the abuse. Um, I don't know. Listen, like, you know, I mean, working in radio, I get a little bit of it. But like, people just always have something to say. Oh, like, yeah. You could do something nice for your grandma. And it's a problem. So I just try to ignore that shit. But I thought that like, that was my favorite episode. So oh, it, I mean, I this is my bold overarching statement. Best party ever filmed on a reality show. Okay. N name another party where it's I mean, some of the stuff you didn't even see. There was an ambulance. There was the cops. Someone has seizure. <laughs> oh, our, our director of photography broke his collarbone. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it was just nuts. I have FOMO. Um, yeah, it was, it was the decent. other thing that everyone was asking me about was jewels. I feel like people were just like, I, from my side of it, like being a viewer, I thought that you, like it was just a game of telephone and that you just didn't really understand oh, what was going on with her and Jordan. And like, if you had, I don't think you guys would have reacted that way. How do you, I saw you apologize to her on her Instagram, I think. I don't know if I saw that, but um, yeah, what yeah. are your thoughts now with that whole situation? So, so here's the scoop. I'll give you the dirty details from my perspective. Okay. Uh, season three, I think everybody got familiar with, with Jordan's um, uh, ability to just lie through life. Great guy, great heart, yeah. cannot not lie. And so when he introduced Jules to the group before the summer, specifically Hannah, um, he like paraded around being like, we had sex, we had sex. And I'm like, cool. 
is this <laughs> your way of trying to bring someone onto the show where you have a history with? Because otherwise, right. why would a dude be bragging to another guy about having sex once? I'm yeah. like, this is just bizarre. So I always had my guard up because quite frankly, their relationship struck me as fake. And I don't hold Jules respon responsible for that, but I think Jordan knew that he was on the fence of getting kicked out by us and the network. Okay. And um, when they 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 had like the like in a matter of weeks, it's like we hate each other, we love each other, we hate each other, and I'm just like this. You is, felt like it was fake, yeah. I'm like I'm sorry, but like everything that I've gone through with Amanda has been the realest of real like right. as a couple and when someone else comes on to it to the show and thinks they can what felt like fake their way through a relationship it's like a storyline yeah yeah and so like factor in that history and me being very sensitive to like you know obviously like jules comes into the house she has no idea how reality television works but like <laughs> that was there's clear, no bullshit yeah. in surveillance cameras there's no like oh this is for tv is this you know nothing i've ever done has right. been for the show and trust me i'd love to take some things back and right. so um long answer but like that that was what i hope people just well they'll never understand that's the thing people right. will never understand that like 